Years of Horror, the classic era. Janice, listen carefully. I've got to break away from the brain for a little bit. I'll be right back. I may have to go do something desperate, okay? Bye. This is episode 120, recorded March 6th, 2022. <laughs> Gruesome Magazine. I was thinking about the way you read that because that's not the way I read heard that at all. But that's it's not. That's even better. Yeah, it's the way I hear things inside my head. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, all right. I'm your host Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films from since be, uh, ooh, released since the beginning of time. Then, today. then too. Today. Uh, in each episode, we'll discuss the monsters, spirit psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. I like it when he puts some stank on it like that. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> yeah, okay. So decades of horror. <laughs> We're also partnering with uh, Play Now Media's three channels, Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel, the Classic horror movie channel and the wicked horror tv channel i think i got that right wicked horror tv channel anyway our episodes are showing up on there so uh you know if you subscribe to those you can watch us on there but we're also on youtube we're also on podcasts uh but check these out they have some great movies and some of them are free you know so you don't have to subscribe to get everything um with me this week are my incredible co-ghosts, Whitney Kayatso, an accomplished artist, makeup artist, and writer. Whitney, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Broadcasting from Eli's underground, impenetrable bunker. Yes. Hidden. <laughs> he in said the bunker. Southern California. <laughs> Also with us is Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of Horror, the all of them. But he's also does other stuff. He's on Heroes and Droids. He's a producer and director with Wreak Havoc Productions and a comic book artist and writer. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Chad? I'm fine, Jeff. I'm fine. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And <laughs> Daphne, who also joins us once in a while on Decades of Horror, the 1970s. <coughs> Uh, and is awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell. How are you, Daphne? I'm very good, thank you. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we could all get together today so I could give you this. No. Um, <laughs> our topic today. So we start off giving a few basic details. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> my, brain's, my brain's just a little scattered. You need to I come home now, Jeff. You've been I, gone I, too long. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have ate that box of donuts right before. Uh, anyway, um, so we're going to give a few details about the film first, and uh, then we'll take off, you know, with first impressions, and then go on from there. You got any so more donuts? Topic. <laughs> our topic today is Donovan's Brain <clears throat> from 1953, directed by Felix E. Feist. Uh, screenplay by Felix E. e. Feist uh, from Kurt Siadmak's novel, Donovan's Brain, which was released in 1942. Uh, actually, it was in, uh, I think it was in three episodes of the Black Mask uh, mm -hmm. periodical to start with and then was uh, put out in book form uh, with an adaptation by Hugh Brooke. The cast includes Lou Ayers, Nancy Regan, only billed as Nancy Davis, Gene Evans, and Steve Brody. The production company is Dowling Productions. Uh, it was distributed by United Artists, and it was released September 30th, 1953. Very short synopsis, or somewhat short synopsis, kind of short. Could have been shorter, could have been longer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Three scientists attempt to keep alive the brain of millionaire megalomaniac W.H. Donovan after an otherwise fatal plane crash. 
the brain has other ideas and begins to possess people. That's our uh, titular character in the uh, <laughs> tank with the saline solution. Donovan's brain. My brain has other ideas all the time, but I find I it hard know. to possess people with it. God mm. knows what he's doing or she's doing or whatever. Uh, all right. Um, I'm so scared. That's about it. I, I saw a domestic box office on ultimatemovierankings.com that said 400000 I couldn't find anything on budget, but it's obviously a very low budget. Um. In fact, there's a plane crash, and the only sign of a plane crash we get is like a column of smoke. And the sound effect. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was about that. (coughs) So, uh, Chad, let's go to taglines to start with. And you know what? I We still do that. I dug deep and, and found some extra taglines for you. So I knew you'd appreciate that. Where are these damn things? <laughs> oh my <Man>. God. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the bestseller that started and startled millions now shocks the screen. And it was, it was a pretty good seller, if I remember yeah. Or, yeah. reading. The hands belong to her husband, but his brain belonged to a man no longer alive. But his brain was, though. (laughs) All right, here, and to go along with that one, her husband's hands, once so loving, now so killing, his mind possessed by a dead man's brain, whose brain is still alive, even though his body is dead. And, And I want to point out, these are real. (laughs) <laughs> these are real. I didn't make any of these up just to look silly. Once so loving, now so killing. Now so killing. <laughs> oh boy! All right, and I this this the, this one I have no idea what the hell is this. Going this on is uh, this is from the trailer that the you know flashes across the screen. It strikes like a thunderbolt. Hurling a high voltage shock, electrifying in its thrilling intensity. That's me opening my power bill every month. <laughs> Ooh. The most fantastic story your startled eyes have ever beheld. I don't know. I've seen some stuff. <laughs> my eyes are pretty startled. But... Oh, I see. I've seen some stuff. Why do they keep Behold. bringing this up about it? A dead man's brain in a hidden laboratory told him to kill, 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 kill. (laughs) That's how many there is. Almost like it was over and over again. Um, Wow. So when I I read that... I don't want to do these no more. (laughs) When I read that, it reminded me of uh, uh, Alice's Restaurant, the movie. You guys ever seen that? Oh, it's been a long time. I don't know. I'll be the only one, but he's 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 uh, trying to enlist in the army, and he's sitting there on the group W bench, and the, the guy comes over and says, "I want to hear you say kill. I want to hear you say kill, 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 kill." <laughs> anyway, that's that's what I think of. I want to hear you say kill. Must have Donovan's brain. What's that? Boom. <laughs> All right, some posters where you may recognize this, this, some this of these. Thing on? This is the most common one. And above and below the eyeballs is the kill, 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 kill. And apparently that's yep. how many kills it takes to put a, a full line in to balance it out. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> but I want to, well, I'll put the other two up because there's something I want to point out that's like maybe it's not disturbing. Maybe it's obvious and predictable. But uh, so here's another one. <gasps> and that that one says "kill, kill, kill" down the middle. <laughs> Look how many times that one says "kill." That's way more than the other one. Uh, That's a lot be. more kills. I should have looked at that one. 
And we know it's from a book because there's a little picture of a book down in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. uh, and then this is the last one. The skull is sitting on a book. So, yeah, again, we have the book okay. connection. But what's, what struck me is every one of these posters has this guy strangling a woman. And that's like what? maybe five seconds in the movie. This is the thing that will make you go to this movie is apparently what they thought. Hey, advertising, man. Marketing. Uh, now, put, uh, uh, put her on there. Put him on there. Choking her. This, this one, they, they managed to get five seconds in the movie. Choke her one, anyway. <laughs> and this one, they managed to get it on there twice. <laughs> I had to struggle to remember what that part, when that part took place. Because <laughs> I was like, I, I think it's right at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah right at towards the very, the very end, end, he turns. The yeah, but... Neither one of them were dressed like that. Neither one of them looked like that. No. Neither one of them had the provocative shoulder showing with yes. the thing coming down. Uh, it's just, it's just sad marketing. Yeah. It did and the brain didn't have, the brain didn't have a skull. No. Mm -mm. Oh, and where's what, what's with the book here? <laughs> a skull comes yep, out of a book yep. and strangles people. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been that, the tagline. Yeah, this one has like the little uh, electrical, I think. Is that supposed to symbolize electrical signals? To I, think, I think. I think so. Yeah. But a skull, you know, skulls. Yeah. I don't know. And then uh, they can put they can put a guy strangling a woman down at the bottom, but they can't put a show a brain because people might get too sensitive about it. Well, and I, why is he green? <laughs> Maybe with envy. Maybe he wants to choke her too. I know. I, I kind of tearing this apart, but I just thought these were weird. I mean, without even seeing the movie, the poster's kind of cool, although mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't. There's so many things under that are not. The only thing that's in the movie is the title, I think. <laughs> well, uh, usually a movie poster is to give you some idea what the movie's about. or so, This mm -hmm. gets, gives no... I have no idea what's going on here. Or here either. It looks like some pervert's watching him choke some woman. You know, that's what that <laughs> looks like. It does. It does. Yeah. And they they kind of got uh, fixated <laughs> on the kill, 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 kill thing. Okay. Yeah. Um... All right, well, let's uh, let's get to first impressions. And this is Chad's pick. So, Chad, you picked yes. this. Yes. yes. So, mm -hmm. so what's the story? What well, there was impressions. When did you first see this? The, the story was, uh, well, we know the story. Millionaire but, Megalomaniac. Um, yeah, that sounds like <laughs> a song. I'm sure there's a song called Millionaire Ma Megalomaniac. Um, Incubus, actually, but yes. sorry, <laughs> megalomaniac. Yeah, yeah. They just need to add millionaire to the, the right. Thing. Um, I saw this as a kid, and and it was they played. I would go visit my grandparents sometimes, and and they would play these fifties B movies and sci fi stuff um, in the afternoons, and I remember watching this movie and not being scared by it at all. <laughs> and that's why you picked it. Okay. and that's that's why i picked it again um well i figured i said well donovan's brain i haven't seen that in years and years so maybe you know and it's pretty popular kurt siad mac wrote it and it had perry white from superman in it oh yeah, yeah. uh adventures of superman and um so i said well i'll we'll watch it again maybe give it another chance and uh um I appreciated it a lot more on the second this viewing than I did when I was a kid, because I was just like anybody can float a brain in a fish tank and stick a wire in it, and next thing the brain's taking over the world. Anybody can do that. But um, yeah, I, I liked it this time. I liked it. I liked it this time, and um, I don't know. It was just a a good solid B. I don't know if it was considered a B movie back then, but but um, just one of those one of those kind of sci-fi ish 
movies with about a brain that used telepathy to control people's minds. Pretty cool idea based on a pretty, pretty good book. And um, so, yeah, I, I liked it a lot this time. I liked uh, all the performances were, were pretty good. Um, the brain's performance was, was excellent. Uh, the way it dodged bullets at the end, all <laughs> matrix like, you know, yeah. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. You know, uh, that was pretty cool. It kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was good. Good. It, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Okay. Uh, Daphne, how about you? Had you seen this before? Nope. I hadn't even heard of it. Um, and I thought it was fun too. It was a good, fun sci fi B movie, just like Chad said. I loved the brain in the fish tank, uh, pulsating, breathing, getting bigger, <laughs> doing things <laughs> brains don't do. <laughs> but um, glowing, uh, <laughs> bowling, yeah, <laughs> sounding like a theremin. <laughs> But it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. Yeah, and the acting was was good. I thought that was fun. The guy, um, the guy who played the like the blackmailer, he was a jerk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So, but I yeah, I liked it. Whitney, you mean <laughs> the, the lead guy? You mean no, no the, 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 the reporter guy. Yeah, oh, the oh, reporter. that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. The other jerk. The, other guy. <laughs> <laughs> the one who had no excuse for his bad behavior. So how about you, Whitney? Have you seen this before? And what do you think of it? I've never seen this before. And I didn't really know that there was that this was a book. Um and knowing that this was written by Kurt Siadmak, like it it was his book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, yeah. But um, no, that's uh, no, it, like like Chad and what Daphne has said. Just it's it's fun, and also it's just seeing like how the telepathy takes over like one person, and it alters their personality. And and I guess we'll talk more about it. But the personality becomes the personality of the likes of the person who had the brain. Mm -hmm. So it's. Um, yeah, good B sci-fi fun. It's it, it. I just I've never heard of it, never seen it. But um, knowing that uh, the writer of Wolfman was on this was pretty neat. So mm -hmm. I appreciate this. Yeah, yeah, and, and I knew about this, but I had not seen it before. Oh wow! Oh. The uh, and I'm. You know, I love 50s science fiction um, because it's, there's no science in a lot of fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, some crazy science. <laughs> yes, there's some pretty magical thinking in how this, yes. the, the development of the connection with this brain. Mm. But, you know, <laughs> having said that, I think, uh, 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 see, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Lou Ayers, I think, did a great job. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's probably the single uh, coolest thing about this movie. I love uh, Gene Evans and Steve Brody, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. Gene Evans plays his, his uh, alcoholic friend, the doctor. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> they Nancy had to bring Davis. it up, didn't they? So, yeah, so, Nancy Davis, and uh, who, who later became Nancy Reagan, was... Uh, um Jen. plays the plays the wife and I I yeah plays Janice. Um and th there's not a lot, you know, I looked up the uh special effects even though I don't know what there was a brain mm -hmm. uh <laughs> and it and it pulsed. It I wonder when the first case of like, you know, how they started using these uh diaphragms on like the howling and American werewolf in London. I, I'm not sure they used it before that, but I wonder when the first, because that was kind of what it was like, like a bladder, you yeah. know, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. uh, only it wasn't, it was just a brain shaped bladder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, pulsing, pulsing with 
wires to it and in uh, dirty water, <laughs> dishwater. <laughs> I'm in sure a it was, fish tank. <laughs> yeah, in a fish tank. It was supposed to be a sailing solution or something. Um, so, but I but I loved watching uh, Lou Ayers the most, and uh, yeah, and, and the acting basically. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's uh, move on from there and look at some specific things. So we mentioned uh, Felix Feist was the director. Now he directed some interesting. Uh, Films in the uh, uh, film noir. So, the man who cheated himself stars. Uh, oh God, I can't even read that. Lee J. Cobb. Lee J. Cobb. That's Jane it. Jane Wyatt and Yorn Dahl. John John Dahl. John Dahl. In, uh, he was one of the leads in. Oh God, my brain is just mush today. Gun crazy. And Gun I need crazy. my glasses. Apparently, I'm getting Yorn out of John. I thought it was Raymond Burr. <laughs> Just looking it at does look like I was like, <laughs> yeah. But it, it's a guy, uh, you know, he does stupid stuff and it ruins himself. <laughs> uh, the Devil Thumbs a Ride, He'll Kill Until He Dies. That stars Lawrence Tierney, who Lawrence Tierney. The modern audiences probably know as the leader in uh, the Reservoir Dogs. Mm -hmm. The guy that had the gravelly voice. Yeah. Yeah, he he always kind of had a gravelly voice, but and he was so anyway. Uh, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. And then this woman is dangerous, starring Joan Joan Crawford, who is a mob, uh, a gangster basically, who runs a criminal organization. But she's going blind, and uh, she needs surgery on her eyes, and the only doctor that can do it converts her into a nice person. <laughs> 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 that's the easiest way to say it <laughs> and usually film noir is, is bad guy turned good for the love of a good woman and this one's the other way around so every anyway. inch a lady yeah what is <laughs> to what is the look at the record regular talk you do, thank you okay. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> So anyway, I wonder when the yeah. devil thumbs a ride if he's got one of those big rubber thumbs like Pee Wee Herman and he just throws it at the car so. but don't pick him up. <laughs> I'm the know, king I, of hell. I, see, I haven't seen that one. I need to keep an eye out for that because that that actually looks kind of good to me. Um, <laughs> it, it seems like your basic uh, serial killer type deal. So Felix Feist's father was uh executive for mgm um but died very young like 1936 i believe but that would you know it kind of lends to the idea that he got into this uh so the devil thumbs a ride law abiding jimmy ferguson soon regrets giving a ride to killer steve morgan oh well happens to all I of us I thought I thought it would be like Hitcher, where he kept hitching rides and killing people, but um, apparently it's it's just one, kind of like Hitchhiker, maybe. He'll kill until he dies. That's um, dedication for you. But the other They're thing, Felix one. Feist, <laughs> yeah. But Felix Feist did uh, he did about forty uh, documentary shorts that were like how to do this and that, you know, how to train a dog. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy before he did any feature films, um, football footwork, how to figure income tax, you know, <laughs> engrossing movies like that. <laughs> Quite a variety. Which we're doing There's, next, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk turkey. I, I know I saw one. It's the sequel to The Man Who Cheated Himself. <laughs> yes. I know there was one oh on how to, how to carve a turkey, but I'm not seeing it right off the top of my head. I remember that one with Harvey Corman. Uh, yeah, with, with uh, Ed Wood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
<laughs> or no, that was Herschel Gordon Lewis, wasn't it? Or was it Ed Wood? It was Herschel Gordon Lewis. It was Hersh. I think it was Herschel Gordon yeah. Lewis. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't know why. Strikes and spares, I, football teamwork, how to vote, how to be a detective, <laughs> the romance of digestion. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i love that one <laughs> i don't know why they don't put those in the front of movies now you know oh my but god the man who brought you the romance of digestion yes now bring you... <laughs> isn't it romantic <laughs> there it is oh culinary carving that was it culinary carving that's another one you fought it isn't it romantic? It makes you wonder that here's one called Happily Buried. That's, <laughs> that's the sequel to this woman. I, I, yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, <laughs> so what do you guys, so what do you think of the, uh, the direction here? <clears throat> Any comments about this? It had, it had that same look to it and feel of all a lot of the other cheaply made movies of that time it looked like um there were a lot more outdoor shots and and stuff like that than normally fine but the insides i will say the inside sets did not look like uh tv show sets you know what i mean it looked like they were really in a house somewhere and oh yeah you know what i mean and yeah. um and it, the lighting the way he shot it, a lot of it was dark. You couldn't see anything, which was probably on purpose to hide the brain. Um, I don't know, but but uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting looking movie to me as far as that kind of stuff goes. The lobby in the, the hotel lobby definitely looked like you were saying, like a real lobby to me, yeah. anyways. Yeah. yeah. The bank. It looked like yes, the, the bank was cool. And I did like the I did like the outdoor scenes because I definitely got the feeling that he was kind of like I don't know if rural is the right word, but you know he's kind of away from the city. Mm -hmm. um, I I um I uh, was really sad with the with the uh, monkey in the beginning. I just went right to cutting the monkey. It would have been a much yeah. better better movie if the monkey's brain started taking it out. Yeah. I want, I want a banana. Do you feel like I want a banana? I want a banana. That's funny. But it does. It does. You know, uh, poor, poor uh, Janice gets emotionally attached to the monkey on the drive home. Yeah. And when they get home, he just kind of like, knock this off, knock that off, right. put it in the cage, get it ready. And then all of a sudden, there's a tiny little brain in the fish tank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like fish bait floating around in here. That was not like, yeah. a good start. <laughs> Felt sorry for Janice. Yeah. And, and the monkey. Monkey's uh, brains are only about that big. <laughs> tiny little things. And you got a handful of a brain in there that's 10 times bigger than the monkey brain. So I do feel like the monkey was on his way to mutating and taking over everybody. <laughs> Before he even before they got rid of the brain, yeah, and who knows yeah. what they did with the brain? They probably mm -hmm. flushed it down a toilet. It's probably on the yeah, floor. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. You know that is. <laughs> I keep What's slipping that? on brains. <laughs> they didn't. We don't. They didn't do much with it other than, yeah, we gave it. You know, we we uh, fed it fed it some electricity, and we got something, alpha waves or something out of it. Mm. And they were thrilled because they were successful, and that was about it. And then Nothing. the man came along. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Felix Feist uh, is also the uh, adopted adoptive stepfather of Raymond Feist. Oh. The writer. The, yeah. oh. He did like the Rift War saga. I think he did one called Fairy Tale, which was kind of a big deal in the 90s. Um, anyway, interesting connection. So here's our leads. Putting stuff I did together. not recognize Nancy Davis at all. Oh, yeah. That's Nancy yeah. Reagan. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So what, how do you think these, you know, we both said we, we liked the writing, but what about, to me, I think uh, Lou Ayers is. Yeah, he was the standout. Um, mm-hmm. His transformation from being this nice little doctor and husband and everything, he sort of mm-hmm. slowly starts transforming into Donovan. It mm-hmm. was uh, it was a really good performance, I thought. Mm-hmm. And I was even impressed just with him, um, you know, portraying this, like you said, this nice husband, this, this friend, but he was very driven and um, determined. And uh, I don't know, I just, I just appreciated that it, it just had a little bit more depth to it than, than what I was expecting, maybe. Mm-hmm. I could see why his, his wife and his friend were so loyal to him, even when he was going through this weird transformation. Mm-hmm. When they had every right not to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. What is wrong with him? <laughs> like, so afraid they couldn't even... S- stay yeah. inside the house to have a conversation they had to go out because they were afraid of that yeah. brain like. <laughs> which which made the scene at the end when her and when nancy and lou Ayer, nancy davis and lou Ayers are in the driveway mm-hmm. and she's like okay let's cut the crap we both know you're being possessed by this brain <laughs> yeah and we're, and we're gonna kill it <laughs> that was awesome that was awesome because up to that yeah. point, they they were like tiptoeing around on eggshells mm-hmm. around him. Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And finally, she's like, "No." Nah, well, nah, when, when, when he when he decides to take the brain of Donovan, they both go, "You can't do that. That's illegal. You're yeah. lose, it's unethical. You'll mm-hmm. lose your license." And he's just forges ahead, and they just <laughs> yeah. go, "Okay, okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> well, yeah." So not a lot of logic there. That's why it's just kind of funny. Gene Evans is like, well, "I'm an alcoholic. I can't do right. anything about it." You know, I got I got eleven bottles left to finish off of that. Yeah, thing. I gotta finish these <laughs> bottles off. You can do what you want with that brain. Is that what it's just soaking in? It smells like vodka. Not a not a particularly. <laughs> you walk product. in a couple of times and Gene's heads in there with the uh, with the brain. Exactly. You see product placement of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Two, two cases of PBR in the laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> there's a deleted scene where he's like petting it going i'll get with you later <laughs> yeah. so what about uh uh lou Ayers? anybody seen anything else with him or not sure i don't think so I'm not sure well he's in general he's not a big uh <clears throat> genre actor but he's kind of an interesting character his first big role was all quiet on the western front oh wow in like 1930 i think mm-hmm. and i think he was nominated for an oscar for that oh, wow. uh, and then was was pretty highly thought of for a while did like uh i don't know he did dr kildare a, yeah he did a bunch of dr kildares like mm-hmm. over a dozen of them um and then in world war ii he registered as a conscientious objector and wanted to be uh wanted to be a medic and go you know serve combat units and somebody made a mistake and classified him as a like no fight or i won't go kind of thing mm-hmm. and i think he it seems to me like i read he spent some time in jail and then you know people trashed his reputation in the press and everything and then at some point they figured it out and um got his classification right he went in the army became a medic <laughs> and then he was doing training and he's like no no i said i want to be a combat medic so then he was sent over to do that and he ended up with a couple medals i, I think mm-hmm. i saw he got like a purple heart and a, mm-hmm. you know, a bronze star or silver star or something like that so a uh, uh, a principal guy right uh, mm-hmm. um it it just seems I don't know. It's interesting to me to go through that. I didn't. Um, know, I didn't recognize him I, I, because I know the episode, but I didn't realize it was him. He, um, he was in an episode of The Bionic Woman. Yeah, and he played a doctor who, a nuclear scientist who <clears throat> tried to blackmail the world into peace. I didn't know that was him. Hmm. Yeah, like a lot of people, he shortly after this, he sort of morphed over to. It's a pretty good mix of TV shows and movies. Mm-hmm. Doris uh, Day. But not, not a lot of not, genre stuff. Yeah. Right. 
Oh, you know what? No, it was Johnny Belinda that he got nominated for an Oscar for. Hmm. A kind doctor volunteers to tutor a deaf mute woman with Jane Wyman, and she won the Oscar for that. Damien uh, Omen too. He was in there. Hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, Salem's Lot. Oh, that's right, Salem's Lot. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the one I was thinking of. Um, what was he in Salem's Lot? Jason Burke in Salem's oh. Lot. Hmm. He was in a Columbo episode. Yay. Wonder Mind Wonder over Wonder. mayhem. Wonder Woman. Yeah. I recognize him more um, when he was older. Yeah. I recognize his yeah. face more. And I think that whole thing about the conscientious objector cost him the uh, Dr. Kildare roles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, I think he does a great job because it's like he's playing uh, Jekyll and Hyde with no makeup almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you really see his face <laughs> change from this, mm -hmm. you know, part of the time he's sort of relaxed and loving and friendly, but uh, then there's other times where he's intense, where he's working on the, his uh, experiments or research. But then when he becomes, um, he gets that look yeah. on his face when he becomes, when the, when Donovan's brain takes him over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he started wearing these suits. This, yeah, you know, like the same kind of suits Donovan mm -hmm. would wear. He, he darker, right. darker clothing, Smoked cigars, and mm -hmm. right like because oh. they did state that when Donovan, like the person, was alive, that he had um, even h when he had met um, Corey, met his children, and towards the, I think it was towards the middle or the mm -hmm. end when they mm -hmm. said, oh. She said she loathed her father. Like, yeah. is that right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yep. because of the kind of person that he was, mm -hmm. and then prior to that, in in the movie, they were saying that um, he had like he walked a certain way because of um some issues with his back or kidney. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you would see that Corey started to have these physical mannerisms mm -hmm. that you would hear that Donovan had when he was yeah. alive so it was and that, you know and that was the, that was well shot too because it wasn't really in your face you know first his mm -hmm. hand starts to kind of mm -hmm. start to reach for to put his hand on his back and then uh, they'd show a shot of his feet while he's walking but his limp wasn't like uh you know it wasn't a caricature you know it was a, right, uh, right just enough that you could kind of tell that yeah, I thought I thought it was kind of funny at the end too when uh, him and his wife are walking back to the house. He sort of puts his hand on his back, like, like, why does my back hurt? You know, but he's been yeah. limping like like that the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, got lost in that whole mind control thing. <laughs> well, while I've got her up here, what about uh, Nancy Davis's uh, role? Now she had something that I read about it was that she really didn't want it she wanted to get out of acting but she was having to go go back and act because uh i don't know when did they get when did they get married married in 1952 so um yeah she didn't want to uh she wanted to quit acting she didn't really care that much about acting but mm -hmm. he became uh, head of the screen actors guild and was so busy doing that he wasn't getting much work and so she had to make some money i can i guess i can recognize her now in that shot that you have there in the photo mm -hmm. we're used to seeing thought, her with uh, gray yeah. hair and mm -hmm. right but you can see in her face you can, i can see it mm. a little bit now the shape of her face um i thought she did good i thought she did um, yeah she did job. Like I said, that at the end when she had just had enough and she mm -hmm. just says, we're killing the brain. Yeah. Had enough of this crap. Yeah. Well, I definitely felt like she was, she was smart. You know, she was, is equal. They, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah, I thought she did a really good job. And I liked the yeah. character. Yeah. Same here. And even towards the end, like the way she would respond with how he was treating her. Mm -hmm. And he and he like when he said something like you were a 
you were a good wife or a good spouse mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. were. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's when the choking begins. Yeah. <laughs> So. Well, and she's keeping an eye on him, and then yeah, yeah, he, he, call, he calls yeah. Frank back at the house, and he's like, mm-hmm. "Well, where's Janice? Mm-hmm. Oh, she had to go get some groceries." You know? mm-hmm. He didn't say she's keeping an eye on your crazy ass, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Sure right. Um, Frank was having a rough time trying to shoot that brain man. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like bullet time from the Matrix. <laughs> and then it, he had it. It was like yeah. he's pointing, yeah. and it's. Pointing yeah. it towards himself. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make this look thing. good. <laughs> Don't drink all my beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was Nancy Nancy Reagan, Nancy <laughs> Davis, had like twenty credits from nineteen forty nine to nineteen sixty two. The her most famous movie. one, I think, was the what was it about the Navy? There was a movie that she was in that she was kind of famous for. I think. Hellcats of the Navy. Hellcats of the Navy, yeah. Which I've never seen, but I remember like my grandparents and and them talking about it. And that's another thing. We need to talk. Are we going to talk about this before we move on to any, any of the other actors? We need to talk about the science <laughs> of this thing. Science. They're, they're all they're all gathered <laughs> around. I said no science. It's just fiction. Well, it's <laughs> like they're gathered around. He's on this brain is soaking in a saline solution with electrolytes and nutrients. And what's that? Come over here to this machine that goes wee wee wee, and I'll tell you. Good and quality they did. science. They go, oh, yeah. it does go wee oh wee oh wee oh. <laughs> yeah. He basically says, <laughs> first they find like alpha waves, then they find delta waves on this oscilloscope. And then he's like, gee, it's terrible. Brain. The brain's alive, but it can't communicate. Wait a minute. doesn't have a mouth. <laughs> what if we hook a speaker up to it? <laughs> the oscilloscope. Of course. It's so simple. I know. <laughs> Why didn't I think of it? I'm the scientist. And so now, there's, now while they're sitting there, not only are they watching the brain pulsate and glow and wiggle and stuff <laughs> glow, glow. now they're having to hear that this we <laughs> really irritating noise all the time um why does they keep doing that that's then, annoying wait a minute how do we communicate we still can't communicate wait a minute Give it Remember a those pin. experiments back at the college. <laughs> no, that was I was laughing. So, yeah. That quick jump. Well, tele- they studied telepathy in that one. Yeah, we have those journals. I know. Now I have it. Clairvoyance, <laughs> telepathy, <laughs> where the brains communicated. His brain can communicate with me. All I have to do is my brain has to receive it. That's all. <laughs> That's it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, not not a lot. And then and then I he goes in it. and sits down and stares at stares it, at it. Squ- squinting his eyes a little yeah. bit. You know? okay. And they just go along with it, like, well, we've uh, come along this far. We might exactly. as well go along with this. Just to... we're going to jail anyway. Just yeah, let him. Yeah. Just let him stare at the pain. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Aww. We are. We are indeed. Um. And the moments that he wasn't physically in front of the brain or around it for it to really have have its effect was even more impactful, in my opinion, than to him just like be right yeah. there staring yeah. at it. But, Maybe if I well, and apparently, glass, <laughs> apparently, the brain has to has to sleep. Although they don't really, the only clue they give you is. They show the brain, and the waves go down quiet. Yeah. And then you go back to Corey in his hotel room, and that's when he tries to call his wife and makes the recording about the about the uh, lightning rod. Oh yeah. Uh, although we don't, which is it's oh, kind of a yes, cool I idea, and they don't. The <laughs> they give us a they give us a a hint of it, but they don't mm-hmm. clue us in until the end. You find out, but. Again, we I so before I do want to talk about uh, these other actors, but um, 
you get to the end and it's like he's like gonna choke her this is this is like right before that right he's i don't know i they're out in the library there i think i don't know but he's but he's definitely got his donovan suit on and his donovan <laughs> face and then they go in to see what frank's what all the shooting's about and uh that's when he says, huh, you puny humans with your pathetic, undeveloped brains. <laughs> There's something like that. Uh, and uh, I don't know. And so then the lightning rod hits, it blows up, and everything is. And then we cut to a scene. We don't know how far away it is. But all of a sudden, it's like, you know, daisies, sunshine. Yeah. Funny thing about that brain, huh? I've already yeah. that. Though. Yeah. What's going to happen to him? Well, you know, we're going to Disneyland. To <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And and uh, Frank, who who the brain forced to shoot himself, he's he's fairly healed. He's in the car with him, and they're all yeah, going. He had to peek his head out. They're all going off to find out if Corey's going to have to do Go some I'm surprised. I, 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 I want like to going to a picnic or something. Yeah, like no, I, I want to see the part of the movie where they're in court trying to explain exactly. it. Exactly. And then the brain was talking to me, and it was like, kill, 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 kill. And I was like, I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it kept what? on. It just kept on telling me to kill, 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 kill. <laughs> And Frank Frank was eyes, no didn't know what they the whole time. <laughs> and he had Frank all the shot yeah. Well, I I gotta say, in terms of being a friend of an alcoholic, uh, he was quite the the enabler. Oh God, yes. <laughs> Frank Frank just wanted to sit back and see what the hell was going to happen with his brain. Yeah, nah, go was, ahead, go ahead. That's a great what idea. What happened to Frank? We haven't seen Frank for a while. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Here I show am. Up. He'll show he'll show off when he needs some money. Yeah. <laughs> he just walks in with a suitcase. I'm moving in again. <sighs> remember that time you shot yourself for no reason? Yeah, I remember. You weren't even drunk that time. You shot yourself. Oh, that Frank. Are we still doing Rocky a podcast? Frank. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's so weird. He walks in, and this guy is uh, passed out. <laughs> no. And he says, "What's going on? You know, we we need. I need your help. We got the monkey. Well, that was when he had the monkey. You know. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, ah, I can't do that. I can't operate now. Oh, we need you. What does he say? He said, monkey. I'd I already rather, have a girlfriend. I'd rather have you drunk <laughs> to do a cornea transplant or something <laughs> like that. God. Yeah. And any other doctor." <laughs> He'd rather have a he rather have a drunk him doing corneal <laughs> transplants than a sober doctor doing a, a corneal transplant. Um, that shows the state of mind that Corey. Was and then in, he and then he says, uh, you know, Janice, put on some coffee. You know, I always put on coffee before I pass out. <laughs> God, it's just the. This is no wonder the guy's a drunk. They just you know, I would be too if I had to deal with this kind of crap. What's in the tank this week? It's a horse's ass. The whole thing, I got it to fit all the way down inside. Now stick these electrodes in, and if it starts telling you what to do, success. All right. Oh, my goodness. By the way. What day is this? Uh, Hellcats of the Navy, co-starred Ronald Reagan. So, yeah, mm. had the two of them. So, um. But I want to talk a little bit about Gene Evans. You guys recognize Gene Evans? I do. From anything? Uh, yeah, yes. Now I can't think of it now that you've asked. Uh, lots of, lots he's of been in a lot of stuff. He's got uh, 100 and, 150 some credits. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, I feel like I remember him more from TV than movies, though. Probably uh, some Probably. some western maybe Gunsmoke or something or something like that. But um, well, looking at some of his history, he he has been in some episodes of Bonanza. So. Mm. 
gun smoke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The oh, thing yeah. I remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Thing, no, the thing I remember, men, is uh, a father and my friend Flicka. Mm. He used to be a. It was like a two-year TV show that was on, you know, syndicated on like Saturday afternoons or Saturday mornings mm. or something where I lived. But oh, he was in Walking Tall. Boy with a tour. Huh. He was? Yeah, he was the uh, Sheriff Al Thurman. He was a sheriff in Walking Tall. Uh, the okay. giant behemoth? Yes. Oh, okay. And I That's... thought there was something before this. Well, he was in the asphalt jungle, but it looks like he was yes. a, just a pol uncredited policeman. Yeah, and, and when you look at his first few roles, that's what he is. Armored Car Robbery mm -hmm. is another good noir. That's mm -hmm. uh, I th think. Oh, the Steel Helmet uh, is a really good war movie written and directed by Samuel Fuller, and he starred in that. He was oh. the lead in. 1951. So this was, in a way, was kind of a get, I think, for them uh, to mm -hmm. have him in this. And which Steve Brody was also in as well. Yo oh, this just looks good. It's a, it's a Korean War movie. Wow. A ragtag group of American stragglers battles against superior communist troops in an abandoned Buddhist temple during the Korean War. All kinds of conflict there. The yeah, so he... talk hour. Ah, uh, yes. A piece yes. of the action. Okay. Um, so yeah, he's he's, you know, in a lot of stuff. It's weird that he still would get uncredited stuff. He was uncredited in Jet Pilot. Um, in 1957, after he'd already had some starring roles, so and and had a TV series. So it's, that seems odd, but. Science fiction theater. So he's a, you know, he generally plays kind of a gruff guy with a gruff exterior that can sometimes be, you know, as the father and my friend Flicka, he was a harsh guy, but he would, mm. you know, at some point he would uh, figure it out or, or show some compassion, I guess. And Steve Brody, what'd you think of him? Huh? Did he do a decent job here or? Yeah, he played a good jerk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he mm -hmm. did indeed. He was like he was... very good at manipulating a manipulator, how he kind of like mm -hmm. you know, he just talked like he knew he had control and just like really cocky and yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought he did really good. I'll get the money out of your coat pocket. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure you will. <laughs> um yeah, and he just happens to be everywhere. Yeah. He's uh, like, how did you know about the bank? I was standing over behind me. I know. <laughs> Where you signed for your checks? I was standing over there peeking at you. So annoying. So he's, got, he's got about 170 <laughs> credits. So this is this is a perfect role for him. In the television show, The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, he played Sheriff Johnny Bean. But he was in a bunch of noir stuff, and he was good in them. He was really good in them. It says he was in the remake of M in 1951. Oh. I, oh. Haven't, I mean, I haven't, I didn't know, I didn't know there was a remake or if we talked about it, I don't remember. Uh, American 1951 American film noir directed by Joseph Losey. Losey. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, uh, if I, yeah, no, that starred, uh, Patrick, uh, or no, David Wayne. As the M character, it. okay. Um, and we did bring him up. A, we have talked about mm -hmm. him before because he uh, there's a Batman connection. There. Matt Hatter, yeah. Matt Hatter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not near as I don't think it's near as good, but it's a typical fifties, uh, you know, journey into mm -hmm. something like this. Um, it's American, and he seems to me like his place that he. Uh, this sort of hunting ground is like a, a amusement park along the beach kind of thing, <laughs> along the ocean. Mm -hmm. it, it's worth it to check it out. Um, yeah, good, 
good catch on that. And I can't, I don't remember right off the bat what type of role he plays for that. So yeah, check him out. Uh, lots of good stuff. The giant oh, spider invasion. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. He did a bunch of uh, Alfred Hitchcock too. Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Wild World of Batwoman. Do you know that one? Mm-hmm. Nineteen sixty-six. Yeah, had nothing to do with the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the poster is pretty pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, but I, I like Steve Brody. He plays a mm-hmm. good. Noir type character. This is yep. almost this this part of it is almost noirish in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, even that picture he has there. Look at the shadows and the the mm-hmm. lower angle. Yeah. And, and I think face. that's the shot when uh, he's in the room with the brain, and the brain takes him over and causes him mm-hmm. to crash his car. Mm-hmm. They should feature. And here's the brain. There's the brain. There's the guy. With the should've, bullet hole. Should have had tiny hands on it. <laughs> that's, that's always better with tiny hands. <laughs> it, it would be a lot more believable to me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Tiny all right. brain hands. So there's a couple of things I wanted to mention that are just really weird in, in this movie. Okay. Uh, really <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, weird connections of what the people did. So I'll, I'll try to make it fairly short. But I, I this is the kind of stuff I find really interesting. So um, I believe it's the Mark Lowell who plays the supply clerk at the one point. Mm-hmm. He walks up to him, and I forget what he, you know, the Donovan possessed Corey is talking about. So this guy, as as an actor, had 27 credits, but he also had five writing credits. And one of his credits is he was a script doctor for the dialogue in A Fistful of Dollars. Oh, wow. Like Clint Eastwood, they they wanted Eastwood to do it because mm-hmm. he was a big star from Rawhide. And Eastwood mm-hmm. said, yeah, but the script is terrible. And so... Uh, you know, you fix the script and I'll do it. And this is, that's the guy that did it. And yeah. I, I don't know if it was, you know, like Italian translation or something wasn't very good or, or uh, what the deal was, but that, that's a weird credit <laughs> for a guy that plays a shipping clerk. And I just, I don't know, stuff like that. I love. So also the, the, uh, the son and the daughter um, of Donovan, um, Tom Donovan was played by Michael Colgan and, uh, he didn't do too much acting. He had 11 credits, but then he moved into sound editing and he was a sound editor for, um, anti mame Oh, the bad seed was his first movie oh. as sound editor. Cool. anti mame uh, Mission Impossible, like 29 Mission Impossible. Jeremiah Johnson, The Getaway, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Um, what was it? New York, New York, and Saturday Night Fever. Hmm. Uh, that just, to me, is, that's another one of those things. He, he mm-hmm. only has 18 credits like that, but he was on these such... Uh, strong movies, Altered States, mm-hmm. sound editor time after time. So then the last one is the woman who played uh, uh, the daughter. What was her name? Chloe Donovan. Chloe Donovan was played by Lisa Howard. Um, and this I actually wrote down because it's kind of a long yeah, story. She got that's amazing. I, did you read that? Uh, yeah. Um, I know her. She uh, and I, you know, I found this out when I watched her in a in a film noir and was looking mm-hmm. stuff up, and I recognized it when we got to her again. But she uh, she got out of acting, um, 
and became a television journalist and was the first woman to have her own television news show. It was on noon on the, on the networks. And the way she kind of made her name was she got a big interview with Khrushchev, which is, was like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then she went on to get uh, connections with Castro and Che Guevara mm -hmm. uh, and became an uh, intermediary between them and JFK and was trying to coordinate some kind of a, you know, coming together or agreement, uh, reconciliation of some kind. Uh, but after uh, Kennedy was assassinated, Johnson really didn't want to have anything to do with that or her and uh because she kind of kept after it um it was seen as uh what do they call it partisan political activity she was eventually fired from abc she sued him for uh putting another person in her you know keeping the show going and using what she called her format she lost that and uh, two days after being released from a three-week stay in a hospital after she recovered from a miscarriage, she committed suicide in 1965. Yeah. Wow. Just a, a That's astounding mm -hmm. uh, career path, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I at the time of this... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I know that her part was really small, but I, I thought she did a really good job. Because um, like even when they first, when you first meet the kids, you're kind of like, oh, because the, you know, they said, oh, do you have, was there any paperwork? Did my dad have any yeah. paperwork? You know, and you're like, oh, they're looking for his money. Or, or you know, I just kind of, that was it with these right. characters. But right. then when they came back and she was talking about how she loathed him, it's like, I thought she did really good. I really was impressed with her there. And that's that short little a few mm. lines. Same here. And <laughs> while this movie was, she was married to uh, the director, Feist, hmm. uh, during production of this movie. I don't know exactly when they were divorced, but. Uh, only thing I left I have to talk about is that this is back in the time when the guys all had their pants pulled up to their armpits. Anybody uh. else notice that? That style. <laughs> I oh. always notice those. They're so crazy. I always wonder. I was going to ask you about comfortable. that. <laughs> Always, every time I see him. About the wardrobes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then and those uh, super thin belts. Usually, I didn't I didn't notice that that was there or not. But yeah. should we stop there? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, we got a bunch of feedback. We got a bunch of feedback. <laughs> We got a bunch of feedback. So, Chad. Yes. You got, you got the feedback up? Give me a second here. I'll get him up here. <laughs> the first one yeah. is on uh, episode 119, Das Modus from Jerry Chandler. Okay. Jerry says, if you're going to start taking more trips south of the border, Coffin Joe is just waiting for a nice discussion. And the Brainiac. True. Coffin Joe's pretty cool. Huh. If you can Whitney, find Whitney, it. Whitney said unknowingly. I think. <laughs> there are hey. some. I've seen some somewhere. I haven't watched any of them, mm. but uh, I probably should. Okay. Uh, episode 118, quiet on. Whitney, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Quite on. Lara M. I watched this great movie when I was a boy growing up in Hong Kong. Oh. Cool. Very cool. Ooh. That'd be an interesting. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what it would be like to see it as a kid. That's really yeah. right. That's really cool. In, yeah. In Hong Kong. In yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool. Okay. Laura then uh, my friend uh, Andy L. Comments on 2000 Maniacs, number 112. He said, while I think I saw it back in the 70s, I really have no recollection of any details, which is generally not a sign of a movie <laughs> I would recommend. 
<laughs> but during your discussion, you did mention bands in passing, and I'm surprised that no one brought up the group 10,000 Maniacs, who were named directly in homage to this movie. Hmm. They were pretty popular in the 80s and 90s. With I don't remember them. Charity mm -hmm. names. Yeah. Excellent, Andy. Yeah. Uh, and Andy comes back again uh, from episode number 12, Village of the Damned. Uh, he found a link, I guess it's uh, being remade mm. um, as a TV series on the Midwich Cuckoo. Mm. Um, so there's a trailer, I believe. Mm. At Sky TV series, the Midwich Cuckoos direct. Oh. Ah, here it is. Sky UK Limited is a British broadcaster in telecommunications. That's not, is that the same as Sky TV? Someone will let us know. Largest pay TV broadcaster in UK. Hmm. So, trying to see That's where cool. this came from. Anyway. We'll have to keep an eye out for it. Uh, and there is a trailer out there for it. He goes on to say, um, interesting that it's being remade. I always thought the original movie version was very good. The mm -hmm. sequel wasn't quite as memorable. In spite of John Carpenter, I didn't much like the remake. And I think that was a, uh, a yeah. made for paycheck kind of remake. Yeah. Contract. Uh, That's my least book, favorite Carpenter movie. Yeah, yeah. The original book was a good quick read as well. I'm not sure if this will get to the USA anytime soon, but did want to share the information. Maybe it'll make your next horror news episode. Hmm. Live that long and prosper. Cool. I'll have to check that out with Dave and Doc. And uh, here's a comment on 117, Yokai Monster Spook Warfare. Who I left out? <laughs> Daphne, did you read one yet? No, I have not. Um, yokai monsters, spook warfare, James Hudson. Love this and all of your other decades of horror podcasts. This one sounds interesting. And in the UK, Arrow Films just brought this one and the other two you mentioned on Blu ray. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's here too. It's here too. Um, we had some confusion when we were talking about it because there was mm -hmm. a uh, like a special edition that came out last fall. Mm -hmm. uh, that had an extra, it had like a poster of all the yokai monsters uh, with their names and stuff on it. And then the regular edition just came out, I think, in February. Gosh, I love this that movie. I could go watch, maybe I'll watch uh, it again tonight. Yeah, so there you good. go. Um, and Andy L, I had a few Andy L emails stashed, so had to catch up um, on number 114, Night of the Hunter. And he says, just listen to your classic era on Night of the Hunter. Indeed, a great movie. So I wanted to mention another very good Mitchum movie from later in his career, Friends of Eddie Coyle. I saw it in the theaters when it opened and maybe once more a few years later, but not since then. But remember that I really enjoyed it at the time. I think you would like it between Peter Yates' direction and Peter Boyle co-starring. Hmm. Take care. I yes. thought someone mentioned something about maybe it was you, Jeff. Someone said something about his that movie. Um, I, from what you guys talking about it, it made me want to watch it. And I was um, I haven't watched it yet, but I saw what it was, was was streaming on Criterion, but it looked really interesting. It looked really good. I've I think I brought it. it. I've never seen it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I brought it up on the '80s because I had oh. another thing from Andy mm -hmm. L, and so I just quickly said this. Mm -hmm. uh, chopping Mall which goes live tomorrow and from 98 these are all over the place Island of Lost Souls Andrew Steinberg mm -hmm. uh, Chad or no let's do uh, Whitney okay uh, Andrew's uh, Island of Lost Souls Andrew Correct. Steinberg yeah okay in 60s 70s he's hard was on Channel 11 WPIX every Saturday night on Chiller Theater. Very cool. Yep. Huh. yep. I think we end up usually talking about it. Chad, you used to watch Chiller Theater, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Shock Theater, yeah. Chiller Theater. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then the last comment. Episode 44, Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. From Mike Zatz. Mike Zatz. I let Chad do this one since... I forget, who picked Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein? Was it you, Whitney? Or was Chad? I think it was Whitney. You did? I think I... I think... I think I did. Okay. Why or don't you read it, though? Okay. I don't remember. You did. You did meet the mummy. I know that. I don't. I'm not sure about. Wait a minute. I know I did meet the mummy. Um, yeah. We talked about doing. You. I remember you said you wanted to do this one. You guys had conversations saying you wanted to. And I wanted oh, we... to, but I can't remember who chose it. Did I or did you, Jeff or Chad? I don't remember. <laughs> oh. oh, I don't know. Somebody read it. Somebody read it. <laughs> Chad, okay. you're muted. You're muted, dude. Uh, I guess I'll I'll give it a go. Let's see. Okay, Mike Stats. Okay, going way back to one of my favorite movies of all time. Always a fan of A and C since a kid watching their antics every Sunday morning at eleven thirty AM on WPIX channel eleven in films like Buck Privates Hit the Ice, Little Giant, and Ride 'em Cowboy. The first time I saw this was when I was eight or nine and had already been exposed to Universal Monsters on creature features and other horror themed presentations. I remember seeing photos and articles of A and C meet Frankenstein in Famous Monsters and was intrigued about the prospect of these two worlds colliding. Watching the film within the last 20 years, I appreciate the antics and energy of Lou. Sorry, I'm not sure. Lou and the interplay with these classic monsters. It was only 20 years ago that I saw the restored version. Some of the Wilbur reading at the coffin, the entire wolf man in the hotel room scene and part of the final castle romp were omit I, I can't omitted. read that. Omitted on WPIX. There is nothing funnier than Wilbur trying to convince people of the existence of these creatures. I saw what I saw when I saw it. As much as I love young Frankenstein in this, I in this is my go-to every Halloween and watch it at least three or four times uh, wow. throughout the year when not Halloween. I haven't spoken about how expertly written and directed and scored this film is. I can go on and on in days, no exaggeration, talking about this masterful film. Thanks, Gru Crew, for going into one of my all-time loved films. Nice, Thanks, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's one I go back to two or three times a year, even when it's not Halloween. I love that movie. So maybe I did pick it. Yeah, I don't uh, know we wanted to. I just couldn't remember who picked mm -hmm. it. I'm, I don't want to take credit if I didn't. I'm like, wait a minute. Someone did. Let's <laughs> blame it on Joseph. He's not here. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> 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 um... I have total no recall. <laughs> We're all total tired no now. No one trusts anybody now. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, so it was Chad's pick. Oh, you know what? Chicken butt. It was a Patreon poll winner. Oh, oh okay. There you go. That's why we couldn't remember. Who <laughs> <was Okay. laughs> Holy moly. You know what? This is a good point. I've been trying to remember to do this, and I keep forgetting, and I didn't put it in the notes. But our very first episode went live at the end of January um, in 2017. Wow. So we've been doing this for over five years, Chad. And uh, Whitney is moving up there. I was so nervous probably. on the first time. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, so, and we never said a word about it. You know, we tend to look at the numbers, not the the, the number of the episode, not the years, but five mm -hmm. years. 
it's been a trip and I, I love uh, getting together with you all and talking about these movies. I mean, we're all volunteers. Sometimes we have a hard time getting our schedules to match, but we always work it out. He's the best. He's the best. It's awesome. (laughs) Nacho. Thank you. Thank As you. my buddy Nacho Hello. Libre would say. He's the best. He's, He's the, the best. best. <laughs> All right. That's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by me. You sure. Son of Frankenstein. 1939. That'll be a good one. I, I love that one ever since I realized that's where the... Uh, the crazy uh, soldier comes from in Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's almost, uh, that movie is so, the, the stuff that they do in Young Frankenstein is almost straight out of the movie. They almost don't change it very much. It, it's, right. it's just that, anyway. Well, Mel Brooks is a big universal horror yeah. movie f- fan, so. <laughs> Son of Frankenstein is the one I get, I get, I get them confused sometimes which parts are in which movies. It's easy. So. <laughs> Especially when we're switching Igor's and Fritz's and stuff around yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is uh, Baron Wolf von Frankenstein, right? I think this so, is yeah. Son of Frankenstein, yeah. Bella Lugosi is yeah. Igor. Which, by the way, I started watching uh, Reacher. I think mm-hmm. you watched that, right, Chad? Yeah. And I'm loving the blues music. And I'm also loving the couple times where he makes comments about Frankenstein was a doctor. Right. <laughs> Details matter. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Frankenstein wasn't the monster. Frankenstein was. Anyway, it, it's a kind of a dumb show, but it's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, all righty. That's it. All right. Plenty of ways to stay in touch. Subscribe, please. Get the alert so you know we got a new episode out. Uh, also, check out uh, the other Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine and Horror News Radio on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Uh, you can leave comments on YouTube. You can leave them on our Facebook group. You can leave it on the website. You can send an email to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com, whatever you want. Um, but please, we love feedback. Yeah, we do. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the classic era as only decades of horror can do it. Say goodnight, you ingrates. Stay away from fish tank brains is my advice to you all. (laughs) Good night. I don't know where they come from. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Some magazine.